Hi, welcome to 123 Radiology channel. In this lecture, I will be discussing ultrasound imaging of ectopic pregnancy, and I hope I can make it easy. First, what is ectopic pregnancy? It is a pregnancy that has been implanted outside the endometrial cavity. Ectopic pregnancy accounts for approximately 2% of all pregnancies. It is the most common cause of pregnancy-related mortality in the first trimester. The main risk factor for ectopic pregnancy is tubal damage, either due to surgery or disease. Other risk factors include pelvic inflammatory disease, prior ectopic pregnancy, use of intrauterine devices, endometriosis, and variant reproductive system anatomy. However, about 50% of ectopic pregnancy cases do not have any known risk factors. Uncomplicated ectopic pregnancy may be asymptomatic and incidentally discovered during routine early pregnancy ultrasound examination. Patients may present with vaginal bleeding and lower abdominal pain. And the severity of pelvic pain does not necessarily correlate with the size of an ectopic pregnancy and pain may even decrease or disappear following tubal rupture. Hypovolemic shock and shoulder pain secondary to diaphragmatic irritation are indirect signs of a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Abdominal tenderness is seen in more than 75% of cases. Sites of ectopic pregnancy. Fallopian tube is the most common site of ectopic pregnancy accounting for more than 90% of cases. Ampulla is the most common site of tubal ectopic pregnancy, followed by ismic, fimbrial, and lastly, interstitial ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy outside the tube can be ovarian, cervical, intramural, abdominal, or in the cesarean scar. The sonographic features of ectopic pregnancy are divided into intrauterine findings and extrauterine findings. The intrauterine findings includes normal endometrium, intracavitary fluid collection, what is called pseudo-gestational sac, thin-walled decidual cysts, and trilaminar endometrium. The extrauterine findings include pelvic free fluid collection, hematosalpings, and hemoperitoneum. Pseudo-gestational sac is an intracavitary fluid that can be mistaken for a true gestational sac. It is seen in 10% of patients with ectopic pregnancy. On ultrasound, there is a collection of fluid in the center of endometrial cavity. However, the true gestational sac is located eccentrically in the endometrial cavity, as you can see in these two images. In pseudo-gestational sac, there is no surrounding hyperechoic decidual reaction as seen in the true gestational sac. These two ultrasound videos show the difference between the true and pseudo-gestational sac. The video on the right side of the screen shows a pseudo-gestational sac. Actually, it is a collection of fluid in the center of endometrial cavity with no decidual reaction. The other one on the left side of the screen is a true sac embedded eccentrically in the endometrium with surrounding thick echogenic decidual reaction around. Okay, let's discuss ultrasound findings in tubal ectopic pregnancy. Bagel sign or tubal ring sign is described as a hyperechoic ring in the adnexa. Actually, it is the gestational sac in the fallopian tube surrounded by decidual reaction. On ultrasound, the central anechoic hole of the bagel represents the gestational sac and the thick surrounding echogenic dough of the bagel represents the trophoblastic tissue. A yolk sac or fetal pole may be present, and this will confirm ectopic pregnancy. As you can see, in this case, there is a hyperechoic ring with thick wall is seen medial to the left ovary, representing bagel sign of tubal ectopic pregnancy. The second sonographic sign of tubal ectopic pregnancy is blob sign. It is described as an inhomogeneous mass in the adnexa. It is the gestational sac and blood in the fallopian tube. As you can see in these two sign clips, the blob sign is seen in axial section and longitudinal section. This video clip shows another case of tubal ectopic pregnancy with a classic bagel sign. The adnexal mass here is inhomogeneous and separable from the adjacent ovary on gentle pressure by the ultrasound probe. There is also echogenic pelvic free fluid collection. The most common finding of a tubal pregnancy is an adnexal mass that is separate from the ovary. This is seen on ultrasound images in up to 90% of patients. 
As you can see in this case, there is an adnexal mass showing thick hyperechoic walls and located medial to the left ovary. On gentle pressure by ultrasound probe, the mass appears separate from the ovary. This is a Doppler video clip of the same case showing peripheral hypervascularity surrounding the adnexal tubal ring. This sign is called ring of fire sign. It is a nonspecific finding and may also be seen surrounding a normal maturing follicle or a corpus luteal cyst. The definitive diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy can be made with ultrasound visualization of a yolk sac and or embryo in the adnexa. This is seen in about 15% of cases. These are two different cases of definitive tubal ectopic pregnancy. Both cases show a yolk sac inside the ectopic gestational sac confirming the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Another video for a case of definitive tubal ectopic pregnancy. However, in this case, the ectopic gestational sac contains an embryo with positive cardiac pulsations. This is another case of definitive tubal ectopic pregnancy. As you can see in these videos, there is an ectopic gestational sac located medial to the right ovary. This ectopic gestational sac contains a yolk sac and fetal pole with active cardiac pulsations, confirming the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Corpus luteum. About 70 to 80% of ectopic pregnancies occur in the same side with corpus luteum. Both corpus luteum and ectopic pregnancy show a ring of fire sign on color Doppler examination. So this sign does not favor one over another. Corpus luteum is intraovarian and ectopic pregnancy is extraovarian except in rare ovarian ectopic pregnancy. This may help to differentiate between the two entities. Um, the differential diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy is corpus luteum, ovarian or paraovarian cysts, and a bowel loop that can mimic an adnexal mass. The structural similarity of the gestational sac to a corpus luteum makes a diagnostic challenge. The gestational sac has a more echogenic and thicker walls than corpus luteum. As we said before, the ring of fire sign is seen in both entities and thus does not favor one over another. Free fluid in the Douglas pouch is common. A small amount of free fluid can be seen in both normal intrauterine pregnancy and ectopic pregnancy. The fluid can be echogenic and this does not indicate tubal rupture because fluid can leak from the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube. The amount of fluid is significant if the pelvic fluid reaches the uterine fundus or present in the uterovesical pouch, as we can see in this case on the left side of the screen. Here is the uterus. Posterior to the uterus, there is, there is an echogenic hematoma isoechoic to the uterus. That here is a significant amount of free echogenic pelvic fluid collection reaching the uterine fundus and seen in the uterovesical pouch. If the free fluid is seen in the Morrison pouch, this indicates serious intra-abdominal bleeding, as we can see in this case on the right side of the screen. We can search for free fluid by doing fast technique used in trauma. Let's talk about interstitial ectopic pregnancy represents about 2 to 4% of all ectopic pregnancy. In interstitial ectopic pregnancy, implantation occurs in the most medial portion of the fallopian tube that traverses the myometrium. And this portion is called interstitial portion of the fallopian tube. It has a later presentation as late as 16 weeks of gestation because of the greater desensibility of myometrium. It results in a bulge in the external contour of the uterus, and this can be seen in laparoscope and 3D ultrasound. Interstitial ectopic pregnancy usually ruptures and can lead to life-threatening hemorrhage because this portion of the tube has a double blood supply from both ovarian and uterine arteries. On ultrasound, the ectopic gestational sac is located outside the uterine cavity in the outer edge of the uterus, more than one centimeter from the lateral edge of the endometrial cavity. The gestational sac is surrounded by thin layer of myometrium less than five millimeters. Interstitial line sign is a thin echogenic line extending from the endometrium to the ectopic gestational sac as indicated here by the yellow arrow. It has an 80% sensitivity and about 98% specificity due to interstitial ectopic pregnancy. On 3D ultrasound, there is a deforming or bulging of the outer contour of the uterine cavity.
as we can see in this case of interstitial ectopic pregnancy. The gestational sac is located at the right outer edge of the uterine cavity more than one centimeter from the endometrium. The ectopic sac here is surrounded by a thin layer of endometrium measuring about three millimeters. Uh, if we carefully look, we can see a tiny yolk sac inside the gestational sac confirming the diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. The differential diagnosis of interstitial ectopic pregnancy is angular pregnancy. In angular pregnancy, the implantation occurs in the superior lateral aspect of the endometrial cavity, just medial to the uterogebral junction. Uh, this type of pregnancy is considered a spectrum between ectopic and intrauterine pregnancy. It can progress to term with a high risk of complications. On ultrasound, the gestational sac is seen at the superior lateral aspect of the endometrial cavity. The gestational sac is surrounded by a myometrial thickness greater than 5 millimeters. In angular pregnancy, there is no intervening myometrium between the gestational sac and the endometrium because the sac is implanted in the endometrial cavity. 3D ultrasound is very useful for the location of the sac. And follow-up ultrasound shows growing of the gestational sac into the endometrial cavity. Okay, let's discuss cervical ectopic pregnancy. In cervical ectopic pregnancy, implantation occurs in the cervical stroma below the level of internal OS. This is a rare entity accounts for less than 1% of all ectopic pregnancies. If DNC is performed, this may result in life-threatening hemorrhage. On ultrasound, the cervix is enlarged with hourglass or figure eight appearance of the uterus. The gestational sac is located below the level of closed internal cervical os. Fetal cardiac activity may be seen. And there is a negative sliding sign. This helps to differentiate between cervical ectopic pregnancy and abortion in progress. In abortion in progress, the fetal cardiac pulsations is absent. The gestational sac is flattened and the internal cervical os is opened. If we try to do gentle pressure by the probe, there is a positive sliding side of the gestational sac. There is also absence of the hypervascular ring around the gestational sac. These all findings can help to differentiate cervical ectopic pregnancy from abortion in progress. Cesarean scar pregnancy. In cesarean scar pregnancy, the implantation occurs in the scar of a prior cesarean section. It constitutes about 1% of all ectopic pregnancies. Patients present with vaginal bleeding. Uh, if the gestational sac is implanted superficial towards uterine cavity, symptoms develop later and pregnancy may progress to term. However, if the gestational sac is implanted deep, symptoms develop earlier. Cesarean scar pregnancy may rupture, resulting in severe hemorrhage. If DNC is performed, it may result in catastrophic bleeding. On ultrasound, the gestational sac is located in a prior cesarean section scar. The sac is triangular in shape and filling the niche of a previous cesarean section. It, the gestational sac is seen close to the urinary bladder and anterior uterine wall with a thin myometrial layer between the bladder and the gestational sac. As we can see in this case, the gestational sac is seen filling the site of previous cesarean scar. The sac here is surrounded by a thin myometrial layer. Color Doppler examination shows peripheral vascularity. In this study that was published in 2016, in the sagittal view, divide the uterus into two halves by an imaginary line as illustrated by the white line. If the gestational sac is located above the line, this is mostly an intrauterine pregnancy. If the gestational sac is located below the line, suspect cesarean scar pregnancy or cervical ectopic pregnancy. In ovarian ectopic pregnancy, implantation occurs in the ovary. It accounts for about 3% of all ectopic pregnancies. For an unknown cause, it is more common on the left ovary. Uh, on ultrasound, there is a cystic structure with an echogenic ring on the ovary. The ovarian cortex is seen around the ectopic gestational sac. The uterus is empty and the fallopian tubes are normal with no internal sac. 
The differential diagnosis of ovarian ectopic pregnancy is corpus luteum. The ectopic sac shows more echogenic and thicker wall than corpus luteum. As we said before, the ring of fire sign is present in both entities. The other differential diagnosis is tubal ectopic pregnancy adjacent to the ovary. In this situation, it may be difficult to differentiate between an ovarian and tubal ectopic pregnancy. This case here shows the two examples, as we can see. There is an ectopic gestational sac with thick and ecogenic walls. The sac is located adjacent to the ovary and was confirmed that surgery as a tubal ectopic pregnancy. Abdominal ectopic pregnancy is a rare entity accounts for about 1% of all ectopic pregnancies. Abdominal pregnancy can occur by two mechanisms, either primary or secondary. In primary abdominal pregnancy, the blastocyst is expelled into the peritoneal cavity from the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube, while the secondary type occurs due to rupture of a tubal ectopic and reimplantation in the peritoneal cavity. Abdominal ectopic pregnancy may continue without complications. However, it has eight times higher maternal mortality rates as compared to tubal ectopic pregnancy. Heterotopic pregnancy occurs when an intrauterine and an extrauterine pregnancy occur simultaneously. The incidence of heterotopic pregnancy is 1 to 30,000 in the general population and 1 to 3% among cases of assisted reproduction. It is important to remember that the presence of an intrauterine pregnancy does not exclude ectopic pregnancy, and it should be kept in mind when a patient who has undergone assisted reproduction presents with pelvic pain. Ultrasound can show the presence of an intrauterine and an extrauterine pregnancy. Thank you very much for your attention.